Okay, so if everybody comes close so everybody can hear. Bernie doesn't want to have to yell, so come up close. That's, it's okay, Smuggler. guys. I'm, I'm pretty, actually pretty good at yelling. <laughs> okay, come this way. Come through. You're stepping back in time 100 years to our original theatre. The theatre, a place of culture to see art on stage, an institution with heavy roots in tradition. Wellington St James is no different, whether it be hosting the finest in live musical performance or the next Broadway hit. However, it seems these events are not the only thing the St James plays host to. I've arrived today to learn more about one of the most haunted places in New Zealand, to uncover what might be dwelling in our capital's darkest corners and in particular, to hear what the St. James family have to say about all of this. I think that I do believe in uh, spirits that haven't, um, they don't feel comfortable or they feel unsettled with, they're not just not ready to move on to the next life or anything. I believe that, yeah, they're kind of trapped, that there's some kind of thing that they want to do or say or... Things that people have told me is certain rooms are really creepy and once you immediately go in there you want to leave and there's all these different nooks and crannies and separate rooms going downstairs and it's just very kind of eerie. I've heard some kind of like on opening night and stuff there's kind of jokes that go around with uh, supervisors. Um, there's a guy who works with Bob, I'm not sure of his surname sorry, uh, he basically yeah, just got jokes about oh you know there's a, go there's a ghost, you know the ghost's gonna play out tonight and stuff mm. and you know, like rattle curtains or, you know, make someone trip on stage or something, you know. I think when, you know, like working, you're late, it's late at night and you're on your own. It's and scary dark. Yeah, it's, and it's definitely, you know, quite quiet and if you hear something bang, it'd be very strange if it did. When, at night when this place is, when you, if you're the only one here, you do feel kind of a presence. There is a book that I can probably give you guys that'll have, it's pretty much the history of the St. James. Full Circle by David McGill certainly did have some interesting stories. One in particular regarding the experience of a lady who claimed to have spoken to Yuri personally. It was freezing, though it was a hot day. I saw this tall, thin man in a black suit, aged about 30. He was walking straight towards me. I said, hello, Yuri. He vanished. I was intrigued by these stories that I'd read, if perhaps somewhat apprehensive towards the validity of some of them. But as they say, books can't teach you everything. After a couple of inquiries, the crew and I were lucky enough to take part in a one-off tour in and around the St. James accompanied by local theatre enthusiast, Bernard McCabe. Come on down and you'll get to have a better look at the theatre and we'll be able to talk about bits and pieces. The masks of the muses uh, on the top there um, were um, f prominent Wellingtonians of the time. And um, how true that is... Bern was obviously privy to much knowledge at the St James, but what we didn't know was how much she knew about Yuri. We sat down with her after the tour to see what she had to say. Yuri was a real person. Um, he was a dancer um, and could no longer dance, basically. Um, so he became a flyman. Um, they're the people that move the scenery around in the theatre, uh, pull on the ropes. Um, so Yuri uh, apparently pined for one of the dancers in the chorus and um, had a thing for her and uh, she apparently spurned his advances. He uh, was distraught when he found that she was uh, walking out with uh, one of the electricians who, techs who worked on in the theatre um, and um, 
it is what is known for definite is that Yuri fell to his death from the fly floor. I've heard all various versions of the story and that you know that he could no longer be alive because of his rejection and so therefore jumped. Uh, I always think it's sad to, to dwell on the suicide because you know somebody has to be in great despair to go to those lengths um, and so I, I personally try not to dwell on it. Um, I've also heard the rumour that perhaps there was a conspiracy and he was pushed either by the spurned girlfriend or by her lover um, or a combination of both. Um, I've, you know, also there's the possibility that it was just an unfortunate accident and he fell. Yuri, a life taken too soon, a famous figure around the St. James, and yet so much speculation still surrounds his untimely demise. After being left heartbroken by a lover who led him astray, does this mean Yuri haunts for revenge? I mean, I've been working in the cafe closing up, and I've been sure to close like doors and turn off lights, and I'll go back and just do my check around the building, and there'll be the door will be open, the lights will be on. It'll be like, I'm pretty sure there's no one else here. But as far as I'm aware, there's never been an instance where some, something's happened and like they've caused something. I mean, you'll hear stories about performers on the stage or stage techs working at night or something. And they'll be inching closer to the edge of the stage and then they'll just feel this thing just kind of pushing them back. Jim Hutchinson was nine years a projectionist at the St. James. I was up on the fly floor and about to head back down when the lights went out. I knew the area pretty well and thought I was by the safety rail beside the ladder. I felt this very strong feeling of being pushed backwards and this intense cold like I had a packet of frozen peas on my chest. I looked closely where I was about to step. There was a drop of 10 metres. I was several metres from where I thought I was. So Yuri, I think he's kind of like helps he doesn't really like cause any harm, he more tries to like make noise and stuff to alert you that you're about to like, you know, fall into the pit or something, yeah. I think he kind of, you know, he's a little onto himself. He doesn't I don't think he think he does anything deliberately malicious, but because he's a ghost, I guess people kind of have that you know, that negative attitude towards him. Mm. So yeah, but he's kind of scarier than I think he is. I think he just wants to have a little bit of fun while he's here. You know, it's a theatre, people like to have fun. But yeah, it is, it is like people want, uh, you know, people who feel that that thing of the St. James as being part of their family, you know, um, they want Yuri to be here. They want to have that person who looks after the theatre. And so perhaps it's like a, a, an unspoken conspiracy amongst us all because this is an important part of you know what we believe is the identity of Wellington the identity of, of our identity too um, and that we we want to have that guardian spirit and and Yuri is the best candidate for that guardian spirit because he you know he he is of us if you like he is part of that St James family and so you know so we uh, embellish wherever we can. <laughs>